let me begin with a Zen monk, Fayan's words. Once, when sand filled in and obstructed a new spring that was being dug at the temple, Zen master Fayan said, the mouth of the spring is obstructed by sand. When the dharma eye is obstructed, what is it that obscures it? The monks were unable to answer. Fayan said, it's obstructed by the eye. Bodhidharma is saying, your own mind, your own senses obscure reality, obscure truth. They are the only obstacle that needs to be identified and transcended. Senses are not so much openings as they are actually dead ends. Our senses don't open into a new realm, into openness. They don't lead anywhere. When you are perceiving something through the senses, everything else is closed. Each sense is quite literally a brick wall, a dead end. It does not allow you to see anything other than what it wants you to see. It is already distorting reality by its very limitation because it is bound to the set to the elements of nature. It is simply an extension of your thinking, your habits, your conditioning. It is impossible for your senses to show you anything other than what it has already preconditioned itself to see and show. The variations are so small, so little, it makes no difference to the depth of your being. How different is one color from another? While for the mind, for the eye, red and blue appear to be two completely different things. If you go a little deeper, you will see it really doesn't matter. In the world of dreams, you can replace every color with another color without changing the meaning of what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. The whole world of experiences, which is nothing but colors, where each color identifies and occupies a certain place in your mind, can all be replaced, can all be interchanged. The rainbow will not look any less beautiful if the seven colors were reversed or if the order was changed. As far as your being is concerned, colors are such a simple, such a small deviation that they are not meant to give you a perception of reality. Now just think about this, how much emphasis we place on how things appear.
how much of the beauty of a red rose is coming from red? But if you actually think about it, there are yellow roses, there are white roses, there are even black roses. They're all just as beautiful. While without color, we cannot imagine beauty just looking at existence in gray scale might appear very dull and boring. So we see color as something very important. But at the same time, color does not define what you're seeing. It does not add anything fundamental to the beauty of what you're watching. Colors can be replaced. It is only for the mind, for the senses, colors are important. But for your inner being, it can recognize beauty even when there isn't any on the outside. In fact, on the outside, it is simply an arrangement of events and experiences. There's really no beauty there. It's because there is inner beauty. The center of your being is a manifestation of beauty. Because beauty is simply an element of perfection. Truly speaking, beauty does not exist independent of perfection. When you recognize something as beautiful, you are in a way saying it is the perfection of that thing that I am identifying. When you look at a rose, if it is missing a few petals, you might not recognize it as a perfect definition of a rose. Why? Because it is not perfectly beautiful. It's missing something. So beauty and perfection go together. Imagine you step out to look at the full moon. For whatever reason, you only see half the moon. And you know it's a full moon day today. You won't appreciate the moon the same way. You'll be wondering what happened to the moon today. It was supposed to be full, but I'm only seeing half moon. It won't give you the same satisfaction. It won't give you the same fulfillment. But doesn't mean that half moon is not beautiful. It's just that in your mind, you were expecting a full moon. Because it did not meet your expectation, it is not beautiful. That's how we move through life. We know what beauty is based on past experiences. And we keep on comparing everything to those standard definitions of beauty. Otherwise, everything in existence at all times are filled with beauty. Even in incompleteness, even in imperfection, there is beauty because the beauty is coming from inside. And it is true when someone said beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It is how you look at things. So senses by themselves don't open an experience. They don't put you in an environment where you are ready to explore and expand on your experiences. Senses block your true perception of things. And in that blocking, there is that incompleteness. That is why he says, to see form, but not to be corrupted by form, or to hear sound, but not to be corrupted by sound, is liberation. Liberation is not running away from the world of senses. It is not becoming blind to colors. It is not becoming deaf to sounds. It is not self-mortification. It is not denying the pleasures of the senses. It is to experience life exactly the way it is happening without getting attached to it. It is easy to understand 
detachment. It is easy to understand attachment, but it is very hard to understand detached attachment. Zen is detached attachment. There are some schools of spirituality that talk about detachment to things. Just drop everything. Drop your sense pleasures. Deny all the comforts to the body. Deny all the pleasures to the mind. And in that denying, you will experience something. And then there is the world where there is no question of denying. It is only an individual who has to see and recognize the dangers of chasing anything and everything and choose to detach from sense pleasures. Otherwise, the world never asks you to stop. It never encourages you to see sense pleasures as something blinding, as something restricting. The world says, go and experience as much as you want. It is only an experience that is coming from inside that tells you that the more I am chasing after the desires of my senses, the less fulfilled I am, the less contented I am. Maybe there is nothing there in the world of sensations. It is so fleeting, so momentary that it is not meant to go deep enough. While traditional spirituality is about denying and the world is about attachment, Zen transcends both. Zen says, what is the necessity to run away? What is the necessity to choose? It is in that choosing that you're becoming attached. In choosing to reject something, you are getting attached to that rejection. Look how practical this understanding of life is. There's one whole community of so-called spiritual people who call themselves sadhus, hermits, monks, who don't even understand that they are fully attached to the idea of being a monk. So much so that they see that being a monk itself as the fulfillment of their lives. That is why once they choose to become a student, become a monk, they are a part of, let's say, a Buddhist order. They remain like that for decades, sometimes for their entire lives, without ever realizing the true nature of their being. It is only once in a while we get a Buddha. Once in a while we get Bodhidharma. Once in a while we get Lao Tzu. When in fact, the sheer number of people who are choosing to deny sense pleasures, who are choosing an ascetic way of life, should produce innumerable enlightened beings. If detachment was the path, then we would have seen Buddhas everywhere, all around us. It would have been easy. It isn't that easy. It isn't that simple. Because true detachment is basically indifference. It is to not care whether you are a monk or a worldly man. 